Imagine this. You wake up one day and suddenly there is no plastic in the world. The toothbrush that you use daily, the pen that you use daily, the phone that you use daily and even this chair that you are sitting in disappears. Can you imagine such a world? You can't, right? Why? Because we use plastics everywhere. Plastic has become so important part of our life. From food packaging to parts of aeroplane, plastic is everywhere. But have you ever stopped and thought about what exactly is plastic? I mean, how many types of plastics are there? And most importantly, is plastic good or bad? I mean, for the environment, for the nature earth, for us. Let us answer these questions in this video. So what is plastic? Plastics are made of long chains of molecules called polymers. Remember polymer from the synthetic fiber, which are units made of many single small units. Now, each single unit can be considered as a brick and when you snap them together, you get much something much bigger. That's how exactly polymer works. Tiny repeating units that join together to make plastics. Now, here is the cool part. Depending on how these tiny bricks are arranged, plastic can be soft and flexible like a shopping bag or rock hard like your motorcycle helmet. I mean, how, how cool is that? But here is the thing. Not all plastics are the same. There are different types of plastics. Let's see what are the different types of plastics now. So there are majorly two types of plastic, thermoplastic and thermosetting plastic. Let's talk about thermoplastics first. These are the type of plastics that melt when heated and harden when cooled. Think of them like butter. You can melt and reshape them over and over and over and over again. That's interesting. Now, what makes them so special? Well, these thermoplastics have straight chain structure. Like as you see here in the diagram, these are straight long chains. And that's how they look at a microscopic level. If you look through a microscope, this is how the structure looks like. And here is the best part. Since they can melt and can be reshaped, thermoplastics can be recycled. That's a super important property because it helps reduce plastic waste. All right, now let's check out some examples of thermoplastics. Polyethylene is a very common thermoplastic. It is very flexible, lightweight and resistant to moisture, making it a good candidate for plastic bags, bottles and toys. Then we have polyvinyl chloride, also known as PVC, which is very, very common in our daily lives. They are strong, uh, lightweight and flame retardant and this makes it good for pipes, cables and window frames. You might have seen PVC pipes at your home. Next up is polypropylene. Polypropylene is a very durable, heat resistant and a versatile plastic. And this makes it good for packaging, automotive parts and textiles. And finally we have acrylic. Acrylic is a clear or a transparent and durable and it's also importantly weather resistant, common in windows, lenses and display boards. So these are some of the examples of thermoplastics which means they can be melted when heated and hardened when cooled off. Now let's talk about the next type of plastic called thermosetting plastic. As the name suggests, once this plastic hardens, it stays forever. No matter how much you heat it, it won't melt or reshape. It's like uh, baking a cake. You mix the batter, put it in the oven and once it's baked, there is no way of turning that cake back into the batter, right? Or you cannot turn, turn that cake into some other cake. Why does this happen? Well, the thermosetting plastics are made of cross-linked polymers like the one you see here in the picture. Once they are set in, they cannot be untangled. That's exactly what happens with a thermosetting plastic. And a major, major, major disadvantage is that they cannot be recycled as well. Once they are made, they are stuck in that shape forever. Now let's check out some examples of thermosetting plastics and why they are so important despite this major disadvantage. So some examples of thermosetting plastics are uh, melamine. Melamine is a thermosetting plastic which is hard, durable and resistant to scratching. And this makes it a good kitchenware and is used also as laminates laminates for the walls etc. Next up is Formica which is a durable water resistance and again another scratch resistant uh, plastic and again this makes bathroom countertops, cabinets and furniture and wall panels due to these properties of durability, water resistance and the scratch resistance. And finally we have Bakelite which is very common and very popular, hard, chemically resistant and heat resistant. This makes it a good 
product to make uh, brake pads, clutch plates and electrical switches. And remember these are non-recyclable which means these are these are going to stay in our world forever. Despite this being a major advantage, the properties such as uh, chemically resistant, heat resistance, durability makes the thermosetting plastics inevitable. Let us summarize what we learned today in this video. So what is plastic? Long chain of molecules called polymers, right? They are formed by snapping small, small structures into a larger structure like these. There are two types of plastics, thermoplastic and thermosetting plastic. Now, what is thermoplastic? Thermoplastic melt when heated and harden when cooled. They are straight chain polymers like the ones you see here. And some of the examples are polyethylene, polyvinyl chloride, polypropylene and acrylic. Thermoplastics can be recycled. Very important property of thermoplastic. Now, thermosetting plastic is the one that is hardened forever. They are made of cross-linked polymers, which is a structure which is looking like this. And examples include melamine, formica and bakelite. And what's important about thermosetting? Thermosetting plastics cannot be recycled. So next time when you look around, make sure that you identify some of the plastics and try to put it in which category they fall into. Are they thermoplastics or are they thermosetting plastics?